basically going to call this series God Been Told You. And it's basically a series dealing with from a man's from a man standpoint of increasing your value, whether that's in the work area, whether that's with trying to find a woman that you're interested in and getting married, or whether it's just increasing your value within the society and the community that which you live. And of course, it's based off of the scripture found at Proverbs 22 that says, Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will be stationed in the presence of kings. He will not stand before obscure men. And so God has been told you, has been showed you the way of if you're a man and you're looking to increase your value, one of the important ways to do it is to become skilled in a particular area. Whether like for me, for example, currently I worked as, as a nurse. I've worked as a nurse for the past nine years and I've worked in almost every avenue of nursing that there is. Um, the only thing I haven't done is direct ER, but I've done things like, to, like ER overflow and worked in many different areas, uh, both in you know, community, hospital settings, nursing homes, etc. And so, of course, I have a wide uh, skilled background when it comes to nursing and so as a result i've typically never had a problem when it comes to finding finding work or extra work if i was looking for extra work and so for a nurse especially a nurse here in new york um, it is not that difficult to find a skilled and dedicated and i would probably say a male nurse because you typically have more strength you have more stamina and you typically are more goal oriented who could easily make one hundred and fifty or two hundred thousand dollars a year if that was his goal? Typically, because you can do contract work and contract work pay, pays very well. But of course, the most important thing when it comes to whatever it is that you choose to be skilled in is, of course, to be dedicated to your work. And so, the next scripture that we touch on is that many individuals may find it hard uh, to become dedicated or as they say, to have to be motivated. What is, what is my motivation? And so for me, having grown up in the church and having read the Bible, basically everything that I do has always been the viewpoint that basically God is always watching the works that I do. And that's basically touched on in the book of Ecclesiastes that says, whatever you do, work at it with your whole being. It says, for the Lord and not for men. Typically because you might not like who your boss is or whoever your boss is for the time being. You might not particularly like who you're working for. And of course, that can always impact your work ethic, whether you don't like the, for me, I might not like my nurse manager. I might not like where my contract has sent me. Uh, I might not like work, working with other individuals in my unit for whatever reason. And so, of course, for some individuals that can impact the quality of the work that you do but of course the bible has already said that whatever it is that you're doing basically as it says to be whole sold and of course the word is typically referring to your spirit basically not half-assing anything in life because everything that you do is supposed to be as if you were doing it for god himself and of course the book of malachi in the hebrew bible also touched on that where it said from the standpoint of someone, for example, if you were trying to find favor in the eyes of a politician or a high ranking individual, maybe it's a boss at work that you're trying to get a raise or you're trying to get a, a, a position change. Maybe you're trying to move from one department to the next. Maybe you're looking to come up within the company. And so obviously your work has to be on par. And of course, God had said, well, when it comes to what you do for me, and of course in the book of Malachi it says, uh, by presenting uh, defiled food on my altar, it says, but you ask, how have we defiled you? It says, by saying that the table of the Lord is contemptible, right? And so in biblical times, individuals basically were basically giving God whatever they had, the scraps. Instead of giving their best, they were giving as the book of Malachi says they were giving defiled food instead of giving the best of the food that they have. They were saving that for themselves and then giving God whatever was left over. And of course, God was trying to show them that that was not the appropriate mindset to have. That whatever you give me as your God, it should be your very 
best. And then the next scripture goes on to say, well, think of it from a man's from a man's standpoint. If you were trying to gain favor from another man, and verse eight says, this is when you offer blind animals for sacrifice, it is not wrong. And when you present the lame and sick ones, it is not wrong. Try offering them to your governor. Would he be pleased with you or show you favor? Asked the Lord of hosts. And so basically, God tries to reason with mankind and says, whatever that you offer me should be your best. Just like if you were trying to find favor with a high ranking official, whether that's your boss or an actual official in your neighborhood, typically you would want to offer them your best. You come to an interview dressed up, shaven, clean cut, etc., because you're trying to make a good impression. Well, basically, the Bible says, uh, that that's the exact same mindset that you should have when whenever you offer something for God, whether it's your time or your energy or your resources, it should always be your very best. And of course, when you have that mindset of always offering him your best, and then he says, well, let's take this one step further. And then he goes to say, even if you're working as an employee for another individual, or if you run your own business and you're working for a customer, when you work for that individual, whether you work as a self-employed or as an employee, pretend like you're doing it for me. Don't do it for him. Do it for me and always give whole soul. When you're an individual who is like that, you will typically not lack for anything. And of course, the phrase that is uh, often spoken of, of uh, work smarter, not harder. Like I said, the Bible has been told you that in the book of Ecclesiastes it makes that exact same sort of uh, exclamation in Ecclesiastes 10, right? And so for some individuals, especially when you're young, you typically have uh, th that strength. But as you become older, you should become wiser. And so the Bible of the Bible says here in Ecclesiastes 10.10, 10, it says, If the axe is dull and the blade unsharpened, more strength must be exerted. But skill produces strength success and so the bible goes on to of course make this statement that while yes when you're young and you're inexperienced typically what you're what is going to come to the fore is your physical strength and your your stamina but the bible of course says eventually as you become more skilled in whatever it is that you do then of course it's your skill that will give you the success that you're looking for and of course at the end of the day Many individuals, unfortunately, have lost their way. They typically do not view the Bible or God himself in any, in any sort of favorable light. Many individuals who think that that is just mere foolishness. But of course, the Bible has been told you how to have a successful life. And of course, the book of Psalms in chapter 81, verse 13 says, If only my people would listen. That's basically the gist of this series that, of course, that I'm interested in doing is to show people that a lot of the traits and habits and qualities that you want to acquire by work and practice are typically already spoken to you through the Bible. And if you would only listen, then you would experience the success that comes with those who have chose to listen to what the Bible has to say in terms of how to live your life.